from time to time in redemptive history, God will send his justice instead of his mercy to remind the people of the difference between justice and mercy. You may never become professional theologians, but if there are any two concepts in the Bible that you need to get clear in your mind, it, it is those concepts uh, and the difference between the concepts of justice and mercy. My favorite illustration that took place when I was teaching in a college a uh, hundred years ago. I was teaching a class of freshmen in the introduction to the Old Testament, and I had 250 students in my class. And the only room that was big enough on the campus to have 250 students in one class was the chapel. So the first day of classes for the freshmen, I have to give them their, their instructions and give them their syllabus. And I said, we have three little term papers during the course of this semester. The first one's due on September 30th at noon, the second one October 30th, the third one November 30th. And I, they're all Philadelphia lawyers, so I had to explain to them, you know, this, I want it on my desk, 12 o'clock, September the 30th, unless you're physically confined to the infirmary or the hospital or there's a death in the immediate family. Does everybody understand? Right. If you don't turn it in on that day, what you get is F for that assignment. Does everybody understand? Ah, they understand. September 30th, okay. 225 students come with their term paper, dutifully, appropriately. 25 trembling students are in the back of the room. Scared to death because they don't have their papers done. <gasps> oh, Professor Sproul, we didn't budget our time right. We didn't make the transition from high school to college like we should have. Please don't flunk us for this. Give us two more days to get the paper done, and we'll never let it happen again. I said, okay, I'll do it. But you better have your paper in on time next. Oh, we will. October the 30th came. 200 students came into class with their term papers. 50 of them don't have their term papers. Where are your term papers? Oh, Professor, this was, uh, this was homecoming week, and we were all caught up with the excitement of homecoming. Besides that, it was our had all these midterm exams, and all we professors had papers due, and... We're so sorry, but we'll have them in two days. Please give us one more chance. And they're begging me. I said, okay, but this is the last time. You don't get it in next month on time. It's an F for sure. Does everybody understand? You know what they did? They started to sing spontaneously. We love you, Prof. Sproul. Oh, yes, we do. I was Mr. Popularity on the faculty because I gave him a break. Second time. November 30th came. You tell me what happened. That's right. 150 students come with their term paper. And 100 of them don't have them. And they're casually strolling in the back door of the chapel, you know, just as cool as they could be, and say, hey, where's your term papers? They say, hey, prof, no sweat. Cool. We'll have them for you in a couple days. Don't worry about it. I said, Johnson, where's the term paper? He said, I don't have it. I took my little black book, you know, the most dreaded object that the professor has. And I opened it up to J for Johnson. I wrote, Johnson, F. McIntyre, where's your paper? I don't have it, sir. I said, McIntyre, F. Llewellyn, where's your paper? Don't have F. Now what do you suppose they shouted? That's not what? Tell me. Fair. <laughs> I said, what did you say? We said that's not fair. I said, Johnson, did you just say that's not fair? And he said, yeah. I said, oh. Do I remember correctly, Johnson, that you didn't have your paper in on time last month either? And he said, that's right. I said, okay. The last thing I want to be to you people is unfair. Johnson, if it's justice that you want, it's justice that you shall get. And I opened up the book, 
And I say, I'm going to change last month's grade to your just grade, F. I said, now, who else in here wants justice? Nobody raised their hand. What happens is we get accustomed to God's grace. At first, we're amazed by it. The second time, not quite so much surprised. By the third or the fourth time, we begin to expect it. Then we assume it. And then we demand it. And we're angry if we don't get it. Because the greatest distortion in our thinking, dear friends, is thinking that God owes us mercy. That God is somehow obligated to be gracious to us. But think about that. The minute the idea comes in your head that God owes you mercy or owes you grace, let a bell go off in your brain that says, whoops, I'm confusing these concepts. Because grace by its very definition, is voluntary. God is not required to be merciful. He reserves the right to be merciful to whom he will be merciful and to be gracious to whom he is gracious. You can plead for grace. You can beg for mercy. But you can never, ever demand it. Justice may be required but never, ever mercy. And it's because God is holy that any time he withholds justice, he is giving grace. If he were not holy, then perhaps his grace would not really be grace. But that's the point of the scriptures, is what what Moses was saying to Aaron is, on this occasion, Aaron, God was not gracious to Nadab and Abihu. He was just. On this occasion, God was not merciful to Uzzah. He was just. And the one thing I warn you, please don't ever ask God for justice. You might get it. It would be the worst thing that could possibly befall you.